Well, that's one way to start the video. Oh, oh. <laughs> she pushed the chair. Oh, she's going. Take 100. <laughs> Guys, welcome to our channel again. Peaceful Rage. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about, uh, a little bit more about spinal muscular atrophy today and explain um, and then mid school, uh, mid school situation without getting on detail for one uh, with what say we hi? went through at the, at the hospital. That is uh, our little princess, Nana. She's going to be 15 years old in a few days here. Yes, yes, uh, yes, 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 eh? 15 on the 7th of, yeah, 7th of in six, six more days. Yeah, it's been quite, uh, it's been quite a 15 years. Uh, we're all very proud of our beautiful princess. Uh, she have went through a lot. We have went through a lot as a family. Uh, Anna has been diagnosed with spinal muscular atrophy type 1 uh, in 2008. Um, she's been also trach in 2008. Uh, at the beginning, Anna was, she, well, first of all, when she's been diagnosed, she's been sent back home with absolutely no uh, medical equipment she was already needed then, but according to some specialists, to... She was not dealing, uh, needing them yet. But anyway, without going on detail about, about this, spinal muscular atrophy is a genetic disease who uh, eat away the, the protein and uh, the muscle do not function properly. Uh, you start losing the motor function early on. Uh, some of those children, uh, the, the progression of the disease is a little bit faster. Some of them, they are a little bit slower. Uh, some of those children, they can function very good with uh, just, um, you know, a min minimum support with a BiPAP who's just going to cover their nose who increase their pressure and they be able to ventilate them like this more easily. Uh, they can come off of uh, the BiPAP uh, machine every so often. Uh, some of them will wear um, the BiPAP only at night. Some is going to wear them a few times a day. And when they are sick, of course, uh, the respiratory uh, support increase when they get sick with the respiratory virus. Uh, but for some of those children, uh, in the, on a very young age, the respiratory uh, capability decreased very fast. And uh, it was the case for Anna. Uh, the BiPAP was not giving her the proper, the proper support uh, to what she was needed. And usually when those children, they start to not tolerating, tolerating the BiPAP, uh, without BiPAP, not so ever, uh, usually doesn't get any better. Um, of course, when they are sick and you need to increase aware of the BiPAP and the uh, breathing support, and sometimes it's going to take them long to be able to... Uh, to come off of BiPAP, but if for absolutely no reason, no respiratory viruses or no asthma or nothing like that, when they not be able to uh, to tolerate off BiPAP, they probably never will again. And it's exactly what was happening uh, with Anna at the beginning. Then uh, after multiple uh, code blue and. Uh, uh, cardiac arrest due to, uh, to not be ventilated uh, properly we start putting a fight to get her trach uh, it's been a hell of a fight with the university hospital to be able to accomplish that uh, today basically was telling us you will not change the diagnosis uh, of course obviously it will not change the diagnosis but you have a controlled airway uh, lots more easier to control the, the secretion and because what you have to understand about spinal muscular atrophy affect all kind of muscles and uh, swallowing it's impossible uh, breathing on a, on your own it's impossible coughing it's impossible then everything what you have to do to manage the secretion you need to do it mechanically uh, then to when you have a BiPAP um, it's very complicated to do because for clean Anna airway when she have too much secretion or when she's sick and she started having mucus plug. We just uh, disconnect the trach. We go with the suction catheter in it. 
Uh, that it's all the, the equipment that Lisa are showing you right now. Uh, we have uh, emergency bagger on both sides of the bed. Uh, right now I have one on my hand. We have an emergency bagger on both sides of the bed connected on oxygen in case something go wrong. But you know, sometimes we use also the, the bag here, the bagger here to help us to manage NS secretion because the machine here give a certain amount of pressure to I can let increase the pressure a little bit and be able to move the secretion uh, up and down and bring them up close to the trach and be able to suction or secretion out when she starts struggling with them <clears throat> sometimes we have some mucus plug we can be as big than the, than the thumb and be able to suck them out from the little hole and sometimes you plug the trach to we need to do emergency uh, trach change happen to us <clears throat> i believe <coughs> sorry guys i believe it's happened to us uh, twice in 15 years so we have to change the trach by emergency uh, then try to put that all in perspective to if you don't have the open airway and you have only a mask on the face of your child who already struggled to breathe uh, if you want to do the same thing, then I will do from the trach by putting my suction catheter in. You're going to need to go from inside the mouth, find their way, go down and try to bring some secretion out. And sometimes you have to deal with that. On the same time, do you have a low saturation of oxygen? You're going to start having a vagal response. That is the heart start dropping slowly due to the lack of oxygen. Plus, you're going to put the catheter in to the creator vagal response and you're going to increase the cardiac, uh, the cardiac issue. To all this, it's been uh, pretty much eliminated uh, by getting your children trach. So it's very, very important. It's the first thing on emergency heart rate, respiration. It's number one and number two. And then if you have a controlled airway, I do understand to my friends, the doctor at the university hospital will like to tell me that we will not change uh, an diagnostic. Completely agree with that. 100% agree with that. Doesn't change the diagnostic. But you have a controlled airway. Just for give you an example, an Asbin trach she was uh, nine months old. And between, uh, uh, between seven months old and the, the time she get uh, she get her, uh, well, she gets diagnosed at four months old. You have a little part that was not there, but she have, I will say, Lisa, probably about 10 major code, uh, with few of them to was pretty much a total cardiac arrest. And he was telling us to pretty much nothing they can do no more. And we decide to keep mm -hmm. the fight and we get the trach. And from that day on, <coughs> all those episodes of code blue and cardiac distress and respiratory distress and go vagal to response and, and vagal response and trash cart and the room filling up with people that was done from the day to the next and the, the crashing in the beginning was the nj2 being yeah and uh yeah it's the trach uh the trach i i doesn't gonna want to say it is is gonna fix the issue for everybody but on Anna situation, I've made the difference between day and night. Uh, mm. How easy it was to deal with Anna after that. And just for give you an idea, I'm gonna steal the phone from Lisa a little bit. Uh, it's not a lie for everybody. Um, you know, we have uh, one uh, feeding pump there, another feeding pump here. Uh, stethoscope hang on here, some toys everywhere, emergency bagger here, another emergency bagger there, few cylinder of oxygen here, cylinder of oxygen here, oxygen concentrator, ventilator, image fire, cardiac monitor, uh, and you know, pretty much all the other supply, medical supply, um, couple. 12 volt battery, a little bit everywhere. To in case of uh, uh, cough assist here by the door, in case of emergency, that is the the fridge for the medication. Uh, we get the delivery of milk today for her. Uh, sorry about the, what my house looks like. That it's all medical supply, um, extra part, extra uh, extra everything. Uh, 
this here on the need here is a spare cylinder of oxygen and this year it's more that is more IV supply, IV supply, uh, respiration, respirator, extra piece, and uh, some uh, frozen medication for IV access. Uh, you know, the only thing we cannot do here for you is open heart surgery, and I'm working on that. And, and okay, <clears throat> I think I hit the pause on the video somehow, and Lisa was. Yeah, it's what I was saying. It's not a lie for everybody, but if you seriously um, willing to give your children a quality of life uh, with the diagnosis of spinal muscular atrophy, I thought it is something very possible to do. Um, but you need to have the proper team around you. I know. I know. Um, Education and support uh, is huge. To support and don't expect they will tell you everything what you need to know at the UAV and they will give you the phone number of every place to call, call and they will tell you everything what is valuable there uh, to try to have a quality of life. They will tell you some stuff, but they will not tell you the whole thing. Mm -hmm. First of all, make sure you have a good contact with a neurologist. Uh, probably if your child have been diagnosed with spinal muscular atrophy you already have a contact with the neurologist uh, but some pediatricians like to keep the specialists away and i think they have the control on the whole thing we have a few of them there at the u of a hospital and uh, a pediatrician it's a pediatrician uh he's not it's not somebody who's qualified on neurology it's not somebody who's qualified mm -hmm. on cardiology it's not somebody who's qualified on yeah, uh, mm -hmm. respiratory or whatever it is it's a pediatrician it's a general doctor then make sure first of all mm -hmm. you have all the team of specialists you need mm -hmm. and you keep a good follow-up neurologists pneumologists will be extremely important if we put them on order uh, for what is the emergency part and the first thing you need to do a good control with your pneumologist will be uh, one of the first step to do and after that consultation with the neurologist to be able to know what kind of option is valuable to you you have a few kind of treatment out there experience uh, it's one of them it's what Anna is receiving right now at this moment uh, she's going uh, for uh, an injection of parents uh, on uh, actually on her birthday uh, it's a spinal tap treatment uh, to, she's going to receive and they, they're going to inject five mils of spirenza in her spine they remove a little bit of uh, uh, spinal fluid and they inject uh, a little injection to apparently the value of it is sit around hundred fifty thousand dollars us right now <coughs> thanks to uh, sma 360 uh to, we very appreciate it to anna has been able to receive uh, that treatment under a trial um it slows down the progression and it slows down the progression on, on the case of anna but Stops. on the case of the newborn uh they actually get some very good results some of those kids who was on that program a few years back and they was newborn then some of them be able to eat now and some of them i believe they start crawling kind of stairs and, uh, with some support but uh, it's completely a different story then if you have some family uh, around the Edmonton area who have been newly uh, diagnosed with spinal muscular atrophy, please uh, feel free to follow us on uh, YouTube. Uh, we are not easy to deal with. I can tell you something. But there's some remarkable families close by that can be always be put in contact with and, and yeah. remarkable ones that helped yeah. us. And, uh, you know, uh, we have some uh, very... Uh, very open mind subject on our YouTube. Uh, everything what we went through with uh, home care, Alberta Healthcare, Stollery Hospital, Government. Uh, we talk about a lots of stuff in there. And uh, yeah, it's my uh, little princess birthday in a few days here. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, 15 and years, 1700 days at the U of A hospital. And, you know, if somebody will have asked me, for be honest, you know, I will not, you know, you guys don't forget to Anna is 15 years old, right? Those conversations, she has them, she has heard them a lot, and she's used to it. If somebody will has asked me, uh, 15 years old, if somebody will has asked me 14 and a half years ago, if we will be here today, woof. 
I say as Lee don't think I will have be able to answer yes to that question, the way the things go, was going then before she get her trait. Uh. Then seriously, uh, if somebody out there has been just diagnosed with a newborn with spinal muscular atrophy and seriously don't know what to do, uh, the respiratory of the child is not on good control or you seriously don't know what to do, I will seriously uh, consult my pediatrician and start talking about a tracheostomy. <clears throat> no, it's not all. Yeah, I mean, there's always alternatives of talking to the parents and um, nutritionists, like especially parents with knowledge. And knowledge is huge on the SMA factor. Oh yeah, she pre peed under Anna's computer stand. Wait a second, let me catch my breath. Remind me how it feels to hear your voice. Can you stand like right here? Your lips are moving, I can hear it. Come this way, come this way. Living life as if we had a joy. That's okay. Thank you.